There we go. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. Welcome um, to the 2023 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund info session. Thank you for registering and joining us this afternoon. My name is Lee. I am the Special Projects and Events Director for the CFDA. Um, I've been working there since 2015, and one of my main uh, projects is the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund. And it's a really great program that I'm very excited to speak with you all about. Um, my colleague from CFDA, Isabella, is also here. She can do a quick wave. Um, and then we're also joined by uh, Allie Mishler Kopelman from Vogue. I'll let her introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Allie. Um, I'm Vogue's Director of Fashion Initiatives. Um, I look after all um, special fashion projects at Vogue. And one of the main things that I do is the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund. I've been there almost nine years. Um, Lee and I work in lockstep together to kind of coordinate everything for the program, working with the designers, sort of being their cheerleader throughout the program and the liaison between the designers and the selection committee. So excited to have you all here today. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, so just to get an understanding of what we're going to do today, Allie and I are going to quickly go through a presentation that we put together that is just like an overview of what the program is, um, some insight into what it's like during the application process and if you're chosen as a finalist. But we want to use most of this time to answer questions from you guys. So we think the best way to do that is if you put them in the chat. And at the end, after we're done our presentation, we'll just go through as many questions as we possibly can. Um, please don't be shy about asking anything. I'm sure a lot of people have the same question as you. Um, so feel free to reach out. So we will jump in now. So um, just a quick background on the Safety of Vogue Fashion Fund. Um, it started in the wake of 9-11 as the country was going through a lot of economic turmoil, similar to how it is right now at the moment. Um, and Anna Wintour and Diane von Furstenberg really recognized the need to support emerging designers in the industry and to help get them through the time um, and for a pathway to success. So from 9-11, the CFD of Oak Fashion Fund was born. In 2004, we uh, announced our first winners, which were Proenza Schooler. Um, this is just a little highlight of some of the past participants, um, Brother Valleys, Christopher John Rogers, Laquan Smith, um, Telfar, Wes Gordon, Rodarte, a lot of uh, names you'll recognize. Um, I can do this one, a common thread. So this is what um, the CFTA and Vogue put together um, in the wake of COVID-19 as a relief effort to help out our industry. So this is not only was not only for designers, but for seamstresses, um, you know, people in the garment district, fit models, people like that. So a common thread awarded five million in grants to over 160 brands, retailers, and manufacturers. And this is how the fashion fund was pivoted um, in 2020. Um, and then fast forward to 2021, um, when we came back after the pandemic with this program, we decided that for the moment, a competition was not going to be the right way to go, and we wanted to figure out a way to make the program more democratic and um, give equal opportunity to each of the finalists. So during the last two years, um, all 10 finalists received micro grants, and all 10 finalists also received mentorship. Prior to the last two years, mentorship and the micro grants were only for the three ultimate winners. Um, we learned a lot about pros and cons of both program formats, um, and I think there's a lot of learnings that we'll take forward with us for this year as well. Uh, 
Um, so designer support. Throughout the program, the designers will go through a core curriculum and specialized professional development support on a range of topics, including manufacturing, supply chain, retail, New York Fashion Week, and marketing and PR. So what this means is basically um, when we were all on Zoom in 2020, we wanted to still make the program feel robust and helpful to the designers. So we started doing these core curriculum seminars, as we call them. And we basically have um, like a luminary in the fashion industry come speak on one of these topics. So for example, we had someone come speak on sustainability. We had someone um, come speak to the designers on how to build a pitch deck. If you're trying to get funding for your brand, how to do that. We had um, some PR people come and kind of explain how you, if you want to show at New York Fashion Week, how you would do that. So it's really designed to set you up for success. And it's just like one um, facet of the program. So we're, with our learnings from how we kind of democratize the program post COVID, we will continue doing these seminars moving forward. Um, <clears throat> these are just some examples from the 2022 program seminars. You'll see that we kept all of the panelists um, to only a select few, and that was intentional in order for the designers to really have an intimate conversation and develop a relationship with our panelists. So a few of the ones we did last year were um, on luxury retail and wholesale, which we had Rupal Patel and Sam Lobin, and then Shira Sue Carmi, um, who work respectively at Saks, Nordstrom, and Altazara. Yes, Altazara, <laughs> thank you. Um, we also had an Instagram masterclass, which is always a really um, fun day. That was hosted by Eva Chen, supply chain and manufacturing, uh, which really discussed the resources that CFDA can offer. Um, designers in both of those areas. And that was hosted by Cal McNeil, who runs uh, programming at CFDA. And then we also did one on PR and marketing. So we had Nate Hinton from the Hinton Group, Terry Wong, and Greg Robowski from Loft PR. So those are just some examples. Um, the cool thing about the professional development is that we really build the professional development scope for the program based on what the applicants put in your um, applications is what you needed work on and what you wanted to develop. So we really try to focus it on what you guys need and then build something around that. Um, the selection committee. So the selection committee are the, you know, not hosts necessarily, but they will, um, be the people that you will interface with the most other than Lee and I, um, Lee and me. So it's Anna from Vogue, Stephen from CFDA, Mark Holgate, fashion news director at Vogue, Cho Minotti, editor of Vogue.com, Aurora James, founder of the 15% Pledge and Brother Valleys, Rupal Patel of Saks, Eva Chen of Instagram, Sam Wabin of Nordstrom, Paloma Alcesser, uh, model and activist, Nick Molnar, um, founder of Afterpay and the Next Generation, and Tom Brown, who is the new chairman of the CFTA. So it's a great committee, and it, this is your opportunity to be in front of all these people, introduce them to your brands, introduce them to yourselves, and utilize them to the best of your ability. They are all here to help you. Um, this is just a quick overview of the overall program timeline, and we'll get more into this when we speak about the application. Um, but overall, the program will run starting tomorrow, March 8th through October. The first phase of the application, which is the one that opens tomorrow, will be open only for a week, March 8th through the 15th. Um, the second phase, which is an invitation-only phase, which again, we're going to talk about in a second, is opening March 22nd and through April 17th. Um, we will announce our finalists in early May, and then the program will run from May and through October. Um, okay, so applications. The application process is divided into two phases, which is you know, what Lee just sort of went over. Phase one, which is what you have to worry about right now. So it's confirm eligibility, which means you've been in business for um, two years. 
um, a short written application, basic financial information, bio headshot, and then those areas that you really wish to focus on when you're in the program. Like for example, if you really wanna work on making your brand more sustainable or you really need support with manufacturing, whatever it is. Um, and then if you have any other like relevant materials, like a collection video that you did for, you know, last season, lookbooks, things like that, we um, would love those. And then phase two is a more formal written application with a business deep dive, um, financial templates. Um, we ask for letters of recommendation and it doesn't matter who those come from. We recommend maybe like a mentor that you've had so far, someone who's supported you within the industry, or maybe, you know, if you went to Parsons, like a teacher you had there, someone like that, anyone that you feel could speak to your ability um, as a designer, a self-introductory, <coughs> excuse me, video. And that's basically, it can be as creative as you want it to be, um, which is kind of fun. We encourage designers to have fun with it, but also don't leave out the important stuff, like introducing who you are and your brand. Um, we also suggest like showing one piece from your collection and then, um, a sample review, which is sharing one piece from your collection. Okay. So that, like I said, was our very quick <laughs> presentation. Um, we really want to take the rest of the time to answer questions. So please put them in the chat or use the raise your hand function, whatever you guys want, whatever is easier for you. Um, I see that there's one question in there already. So I think we can just answer that quickly. What's the best way to submit the electronic portfolio? So everything is going to be um, online for this first phase. That's all you need to worry about is um, tomorrow. We're going to email you a link. We'll also post it on Vogue.com and CFDA.com and on Instagram. So it'll be hard to miss. But all you need to do is register using that link. And then all the application materials will be there for you. Um, what are the eligibility points? How much does financial information weigh on the decision for the process? Not heavily. It's really just to understand if you're like profitable or not. In fact, I think that's the only question on phase one about financials. Are there any in-person interviews during phase two? Um, we don't do anything in person during the application process until the finalists are decided on. Um, so there's nothing that you would need to do as part of the application process for that. How was 9-11 associated this or was that which is a timeline reference? Yes, that was a timeline reference and kind of um, that was another time where, um, you know, the states were going through a particularly challenging time economically and the leaders in our industry wanted to give back to our community. Um, is this an on-site process if selected or done remotely, remotely between May through October? That's a great question. Um, it will be a hybrid. So though there will be some things like, for example, the professional development um, core curriculum, which we might continue to do on Zoom, but there will be a lot of in-person activities as well. Um, one thing that's important to keep in mind is if you're, you, you could, do not need to be based in New York for this program at all. Um, but if you're not, you do need to figure out ways in order to which to get you to New York and, and accommodations. Uh, sometimes we've been able to help with a hotel partnership, but it's not something that I can go in here like with that set in mind. So just something to consider if you're applying. And we'll, um, you know, when you are accepted to the program, we let you know what the dates are that you would have to be in New York. Um, how, how many finalists will, will there be for this cycle? 10. We always select 10 designers each year. Um, does the brand have to be profitable to be eligible? No, it does not. Definitely not. Um, we understand this is an emerging designer program and that the businesses are young at this point. Um, it's really just to get, that question is really just to get an overview of your brand. 
Does it matter if you are a few weeks short of two years in business? What is the official cutoff? So it's not like when you're applying to school and there's like, you know, cutoff date of June 1st, your birthday has to be before. It's more like a rough timeline. We suggest brands be in business for two years and kind of have legs to stand on to apply to this program. We don't want someone applying when they're too green or they're just figuring out um, what they're doing. We want you to really have your footing and um, feel like you understand your brand identity and where you want to go with your business before you apply. So that's why we have a two-year minimum. If that makes sense. Um, can someone please repeat the deadline? So just the first phase right now is April 8th, so tomorrow through the 15th. Um, and then after that, we'll communicate all uh, necessary dates for future applications as well. What points do you really focus on when selecting the finalists? I would say creativity, um, authenticity, you know, if you're kind of authentic to what you're doing, if you're doing something new and different, um, having an understanding of like really where you want to go. Like I would not suggest writing on the application. I don't know where I, what I want to do in five years with my brand, but really have um, if you're applying to the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund, understand what you want to get out of that. Um, and, you know, it's a really exciting opportunity and you want to be able to give it your all and focus on this for those months that you're in it. So just be prepared to um, have some extra work on your plate during those months. But it's an invaluable network that you are a part of once you're in the CFDA Vogue family. Um, this is a question about the letters of recommendation and if you should get one addressed specifically for the fund or if you can use one from a previous project. I would recommend definitely getting one specific to the fashion fund. Um, I think just having something that's solely based on the program will be a lot more meaningful, especially when the selection committee is reviewing. Um, someone's asking about their Milan fashion week show. Um, that's a specific question, but I don't think that, I mean, it won't affect your, um, application at all, but if you are in the fashion fund, we always encourage you to do something in New York. I will say, because we like to support, um, fashion in the USA. Totally. Um, is social media presence included as an overview in our application? Um, we do ask for social handles, but at the moment they're not used as like a metric in part of your application process. That said, like, I think almost always we do look at your Instagrams, um, but it doesn't need like, there's no follower minimum or anything like that. Again, it's just to see an overview. For the submissions to the portal, will there be the coffee table style portfolio that we submit or no? Yes, that is the portfolio that you submit. Um, in the past few years, it's been digital. So that's always a part of the application. And that's really your opportunity to show what your brand is. Like as this person said, like a coffee table book. If you wanted to give someone a get to know you and who you and your brand are, press clippings, inspiration, like have fun with it. It's kind of a cool exercise. Um, this is a question about if you've been in business for over 20 years, can you still apply? Um, yes, you can. We only have the business minimum, which is the two year mark that Ali said. I think if you are applying and you're at that point, you just need to be very specific in why you're, de you're deciding to apply to an emerging designer program at this point and what you want to get out of it. What's been the average size of your application pool over the past two to three years? Um, Lee, help me out. It's like around 300 we get, right? I would say like, yes, yeah, between three and 400. Yeah. Um, will past winners be eligible to apply and win again? That's something I will say that is always sort of possible. Um, I don't think we've had anybody that has won twice. Like if you've already won, you're usually not applying for the fashion fund again. 
We have had several designers that have been finalists twice, um, but they would really need to show the selection committee how they've grown between the time that they were last a finalist and now and be very specific about their goals for now. So it's sort of always open, but it doesn't mean that that will happen on a yearly basis. Are accessory brands eligible? Yes. Yes. Accessories, jewelry, menswear, swimwear. This Whatever. is a really good uh, question about if you've applied before, should you reuse your application from the past or create a new one? And overwhelmingly, please create a new application. Um, this has come up in the past. It's, it's been like, um, especially for phase two with the portfolios and the videos and some of the more creative things that you need to apply. Um, it's very quickly noticed by the selection committee if it's a repeat from a previous year and it hasn't always been perceived well. Um, so please send new and updated information. Also, just to add to that, that was like the last time you applied would have been at least a year ago. So I would imagine you would want to include what you've been working on in the past year, like any new work or, you know, how you've grown since you applied last. Exactly. Um, okay. About the portfolio, does it need to be the drawings and the lookbook with the pictures of the samples? I don't know what that means. Like for the, it should be your lookbook, like whatever that is, whatever you send out to press. It doesn't have to be like your process, like your sketches. Um, if you want to include that, sure. So the lookbooks are a separate silo on the application. You have lookbooks and then there's the portfolio. So you don't need to put your lookbooks in the portfolio, but if you, if you sketch and you want to show your creative process, absolutely, like show an example of that in the portfolio. There's really no requirements with that. It's like your opportunity to have fun and be creative. Yeah. Um, but for this first phase of the application, it does specifically ask you for your lookbook. So with that, I wouldn't include drawings or line sheets. Right. Just you send your like editorial lookbook, like Ali said, whatever you're sending out to press or for retailers. Um, are we only assessed with past collections or we can, can we include a future collection to show their creativity? So for phase one, I think the prompt uh, says your two most recent lookbooks. Um, there's also an opportunity to include an additional video or brand book. So whatever you want to submit within those three things is up to you. Um, is the physical coffee table submission for phase? No, that it's not phase one at all. There's like phase one is super rudimentary and it's like online and you put in, you know, your name, your brand name, um, how many years you've been in business, things like that. So the um, portfolio is phase two. Yeah. So just to, because I think there's a few questions about um, the phase one, phase two, and the review process between and what that looks like. So basically after phase one, we'll meet with the committee. We will go through the applications. And after that, we will narrow it down from that three to 400 applicants to typically 30 to 50 applicants. There's not a set number on that every year. Those 30 to 50 applicants will be the ones that are invited to apply for the phase two part of it. Either way, we're gonna notify everybody so you're not just gonna be waiting around. It's not like you're never gonna hear from us again. We will let you know, um, but that's how, um, you know, it's sort of a narrowing down process, narrow down from 30 to 50 to the final 10. And we'll also let you know how to submit at that time. hundred yes, percent. Lee, I'm going to let you ask this, answer this question about becoming members of the CFDA. Oh, <laughs> um, do finalists automatically become members of the CFDA going forward? Or is that a separate application process beyond the fund? That's a great question. Um, it's a separate application process. A lot of times we see that CFDA vote fashion fund finalists and winners um, 
sort of create a pathway into CFDA membership, but it's not a given. Um, at the moment, CFDA membership is actually invitation only and not, not an application process. I'm not 100% sure what that will look like for 2024, for example, but at the moment, that's what we're looking at. How about age of the applicants? Is this a factor for the selection committee? It's not, it's just kind of a formality. Um, if you've been in business for 25 years, but have pivoted to a new design aesthetic in recent years, is this acceptable? Yes, I think you just have to, again, be transparent about maybe your past business and the future and why you're applying for Fashion Fund at this point. One note about age, I will say, if you're still in school, that um, it's, you know, we would want you to probably graduate before you apply to the program, like an undergrad. Any other questions? Will this be video documented by the CFDA as it has been in the past? Um, I think it's always something that's possible. At the moment, we don't have plans for a TV show, but we never necessarily take it completely off of. Uh, yeah, there's the always like content opportunities, mm -hmm. like when you're in the fund. And if um, you're referring to this video that we're doing now, I know the CFDA is, we'll post this after. Just in case you wanted to refer to anything. Yeah, exactly. We will actually, we're going to do two things. We're going to send it to you guys tomorrow when the application opens. So if you want to review while you're looking at that application, you can do that. And we'll also put it on the CFDA YouTube um, in a few days. So again, you can go back and revisit. Um, I'm trying to, to think of other common questions for phase one and, or maybe tips, trip, tricks, et cetera. Um, but for phase one, the lookbooks are particularly important because we have such a large pool of applicants. Um, and that really has to narrow down from hundreds to no more than about 50. So that should be a major area for you guys to focus on and just make sure you're submitting it like in the right format, that it's not going to be something that we're, we aren't able to download or silly things like that. Just make sure it's sort of buttoned up and easy and in the right format. All of that is on the application itself. It tells you exactly how it needs to be submitted. So just make sure you're following the instructions. Yeah. And just make, yeah, as Lee said, make sure it's easy, straightforward, and that you've like answered every question, that you don't leave anything out. Also in phase one, um, there are two questions. It asks you for a list of retailers and also asks you for a, a list of press. Um, I think the press one is particularly important in the way that you submit it because we don't necessarily need a list of like 300 links to every press mention you've ever gotten before in the history of your business. You should really keep it like very top line, um, like maybe if you had any covers or like major celebrity placements. Um, so just be a little bit strategic there. And again, make sure it's in a way that's easily reviewable, given the number of applications that we're going to be reviewing. There's more questions coming into the chat now. Um, it's not a disadvantage of being direct to consumer. Many brands are. Not at all. Yeah. Um, how many looks do you recommend the lookbooks to be? I mean, it's really just how many looks are in your collection. I don't, there's not a minimum or maximum, um, whatever you have. Whole, wholesale partners, do they weigh heavily on selection? Not at all, but it's helpful to know if you're sold somewhere. Um, that looks, looks like a few people had that same question. And then regarding formats for your application, um, it all is listed on the actual application. So when you see it tomorrow, it'll tell you exactly the format uh, in which it needs to be submitted. 
And then maybe some helpful tips for the second phase too. Um, we talked about the lookbook and the, and the video. Um, Ali alluded, alluded to this already a little bit about being creative, but I think one thing to always keep in mind in any point of this application process is the volume of applications that are being reviewed and trying to figure out the best way for yours to stick out. And the best way I think that we've always seen that is like whatever, being creative, but being very authentic to whatever your brand is and making that very clear from when we open the first page of phase one, like all the way through phase two, that it's unwavering and we just know like this is your brand and we get it from the start. And those seem to be the ones that really like rise to the top and end up being the final 10. Yeah, that's well said. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank nice you, to everyone. see you all. Good luck. Um, Good luck. Yes. Good luck with the application. Um, if you have questions, once you get it tomorrow, you can email cbff at cfda.com um, and we'll do our best to answer you quickly there. But uh, good luck to everybody and we hope to see you guys soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your interest. Bye. Bye.